it's just a great movie. And essential. <laughs> You know, often actors don't get a chance to go out on a really great film, and we were sorry, certainly, to lose Carol Lombard when we did, so young, but at least she went out certainly on a great film. But Carol Lombard was always considered the first Hollywood victim of the Second World War because she was actually on a bond tour selling war bonds yep. in the East, and on a plane trip back home to California to her husband, Clark Gable, yep. uh, she was killed. That was in January of 1942, right after we had entered World War II. So it was like she was considered, you know, the first victim. Through her love of Clark Gable, though, I love the stories that come out of the, you know, the legend of their romance of what a better person she, you know, encouraged him to be and how he always loved her so. And eventually, um, when he passed, his current wife had had him buried next to Carol Lombard, which was his, his wish. Right. Um, and she carried that out. So it makes me think, you know, again, of what an extraordinary person Carol Lombard must have been to be a great influence on a great man. And Well, she was um, the one, you know, that I always heard, because I certainly was never in California around the time she was, but everybody talked about they all love Carol Lombard. She talked like a truck driver, and she played cards on the uh, sets with all the grips and everything like that. She's the only one who never had a dressing room because she didn't like to go to a dressing room and be isolated in between shots. She'd be with the crew and talking and all that. They all adored Carol Lombard. So it was a great loss to the movie industry and to everybody. Well, I think also her beauty was so inviting and so unalienating. Mm -hmm. I mean, she just was a classic, but there was something so always inviting about her. And it's nice to know that she personally was very much the same person that you get from the screen, right. which is just a come on in, perfect, I want to be there, thank you, I love you, Carol Lombard. Yeah, and we just have to talk a little more about Ernst Lubitsch, who was such a wonderful director. He could take such a simple story um, and, and what he would add with his way of telling the story would make it the difference between just an ordinary movie and this extraordinary film. He was a director's director. Yeah, yeah and the audience's director as well. Yeah. But The Shop Around the Corner with Jimmy Stewart and Margaret Sullivan, yep. one of my great favorite movies of all time, Clooney Brown, and The Merry Widow with Marie Chevalier and Jeanette MacDonald, and there were just so many good movies in there. And he died fairly young in the 1940s, and otherwise we would have had a lot more Ernst Lubitsch films, but we're so grateful for the ones we have. Well, this one is certainly no exception, yeah. and I just... I, I of, of all of our films this, this year on The Essentials, I, I really um, could not love this one more. Yeah. Well, let's move on. Join us next week for another movie we think is an essential. Here's a preview. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, 1966? When you talk about on-screen chemistry, Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor certainly would be at the top of the list. <laughs> The transformation into these characters is nothing short of amazing. Mike Nichols took what was a one-set play and turned it into this magnificent movie that's never claustrophobic. This is the quintessential example of a powerhouse debut from a director. From 1966, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? That's next Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can find out more at TCM.com. Thanks for joining us for The Essentials. Tonight on Turner Classic Movies, Jack Benny doesn't fiddle around when it comes to radio ratings in the big broadcast of 1937. Then Benny hijacks a few creative co-eds for a college holiday. And reform school isn't exactly a retreat for Jill Ireland in So Evil, So Young. Turner